In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to our service on this Christmas Eve. Uh, this is the fourth Christmas that we've had online services. Um, and it's really good to be with you. There will be this evening, if you're watching this on Christmas Eve, there will be this evening the first Mass of Christmas. Uh, the equivalent of Midnight Mass. Um, there won't be a service on Christmas Day, but you're more than welcome to watch that one on Christmas Day. It'll all be very relevant. Uh, tomorrow uh, we will be preparing to cook um, in excess of 110 Christmas Day meals. Um, which will be, for those on their own, uh, they'll come to Treverbin Hall or we'll be delivering a load out to those who are housebound. But let us start with our first hymn. the Lord will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart therefore in the light of Christ let us confess our sins Almighty God 
to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So let us pray. Eternal God, as Mary waited for the birth of your Son, so we wait for Jesus' coming in glory. Bring us through the birth pangs of this present age to see with her our great salvation in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. Now when David the king was settled in his house and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See, now I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David. Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day and I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? And therefore you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be a prince over my people Israel, and I have been with you wherever you went and have cut off all your enemies from before you, and will make you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly from time to t that time I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies." Moreover, the Lord declares to you, David, that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure for ever before me. Your throne shall be established for ever. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. The God who is able to strengthen you, 
according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for so long, but is now disclosed, and that through the prophetic writings it made known to all Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith to the one only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory for ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his path. All flesh shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. <clears throat> Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. In the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob for ever, and his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The only Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. When looking at the Sunday readings and trying to understand what they are about, one very useful of them is generally there is a connection between the first reading or the reading from the Old Testament and the Gospel. And this gives a good indication of what direction to take. The reading today, the first reading, from the book of Samuel. King David, full of zeal and enthusiasm, wants to build a temple for the Lord. And he asks the prophet Nathan for guidance. Nathan is initially, initially positive, but then has a vision in which he is told it is not David who is to build the temple, but his son Solomon. David has already done great things, but the Lord wants to remind him that all that has been achieved is God's doing. It is not David who provides a home for the Lord, but the Lord who provides a home for David and for the people of Israel. Indeed, there is a wonderful pun involved here. David does not build a house for the Lord, but instead the Lord provides a house for David. What he provides him with is a great family of descendants the house of David. And we ourselves are indeed spiritual descendants of David. We therefore are part of this great house. But even when the temple is eventually built, it is not going to be absolutely permanent structure. After all, it was destroyed twice. Nevertheless, the temple was a place of sacrifice to the Lord, and it contained the Holy of Holies, where God was said to dwell. The whole idea of the temple as a place to contain the Lord is, 
in a sense, quite extraordinary. It is, of course, impossible to contain the uncontainable. But we humans cannot seem to comprehend God unless we are able to pin him down to a specific time and place. Our human limitations cannot easily cope with a God who is always and everywhere. It is much easier for us to compartmentalise and to confine God to the tabernacle, to the church, to get on with our lives and turn him on on Sundays and other special times when we come to meet God in word and sacrament at a service. And in this way we find that God does not cramp our style as we live out our daily life. But if we are to think about God as he really is, it's quite a different story. For God is with us at every moment, in every thought, word and deed. His presence is one of total intimacy. He is closer to us than we are to ourselves. Wonderful as this may sound, some find this a bit worrying, a bit difficult. And although too much to cope with, we might feel that God is crowding us somewhat and that there is no private area we can call our own. It might be natural to think like this if we are talking about any other kind of relationship. But this is a relationship of love. And yet it is not to be merely equated with the sort of love we humans feel. No, this is a relationship of love with God himself. It is a love raised to a far higher level than we could ever think of for ourselves. This is mind-blowing stuff. By refusing to limit God to specific times and spaces, and by opening ourselves up to him in his infinite goodness, we are unab unable to live on a completely different level from those around us. We find ourselves living on intimate terms with the High King of Heaven. He is ever present to us. We are in constant conversation with him and we walk together on this wonderful journey we call life. This marvellous relationship is exemplified in the Gospel account we are presented with today. The story of the Annunciation. Mary is so open to God and so close to him that God chooses to manifest himself in the shape of Jesus who is literally born in her. Thus it is that final decisive chapter in the story of our salvation is begun. The deep holiness of this simple girl Mary of Nazareth becomes the opportunity for Christ to make his appearance and to bring about the salvation of the whole human race. It is magnificent and mysterious and is an immensely satisfying sequence of events which is quite staggering in its scale and it brings us to our knees when we take the time to contemplate what God has done. On this, the last Sunday of Advent, which again, which this year falls on Christmas Eve, we obviously begin more intensely to prepare for the celebration of Christmas although the reality is most of it will be done by now. Hopefully the practical things, the buying the presents, the shopping the food, and all the necessities of a great feast are done. But we should not forget that this great feast is in honour of the Lord, and we take time to prepare ourselves spiritually as well. We look at Mary, and we see her in her simplicity, and in her obedience to God's will. A wonderful model for our own life. We cannot imagine very clearly what went through her mind on that extraordinary day or on the subsequent days of her pregnancy and all that came afterwards. All we know is that she placed herself at God's disposal and that he found her to be a worthy vessel to carry his only begotten son. The mighty King David was not permitted to provide a home for the Lord, but his descendant, not the immensely wealthy Solomon, but the poor and simple Virgin Mary was chosen instead. She was not to build a temple for God, but to be the temple of God. We contemplate this great mystery. We stand in awe of what God brought, God brought into being. We pay honour and reverence to his handmaid Mary. And it is our prayer today that we may imitate her and be so open and welcoming to God that God may make his true home in us and that we will carry him to all those that we encounter. Let us declare our faith in God as we say together, 
We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And so we now turn to lighting our fourth candle on the Advent wreath. God our Father, the angel Gabriel told the Virgin Mary that she was to be the mother of your son. Though Mary was afraid, she responded to your call with joy. Help us, whom you call to serve you, to share like her in your great work of bringing to our world your love and healing. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who is coming into the world. Lord Jesus, light of the world, blessed is Gabriel who brought good news. Blessed is Mary, your mother and ours. Bless your church preparing for Christmas. And bless us, your children, who long for your coming. Lord of all life and hope, as we rejoyfully remember that you, like us, were born as a tiny baby, who could be cradled in the arms of the people who loved you the most. We come before you to celebrate that you came to us in the ups and downs of our sometimes complicated lives. We bring you our dearest hopes and dreams and the people we cherish forever and always. In hope and joy, we bring you all religious leaders. May they continue to encourage us to allow Jesus to be born in our lives and our world. Lord, in your mercy. In hope and joy, we bring you all people in public office, whether local, national or international. May God bless and reward their service on behalf of others and may they work together for security and peace. Lord, in your mercy. In hope and sadness, we pray for all those whose lives are torn apart by war and violence. May they be an end to their suffering and pain and the beginning of new life and hope. Lord, in your mercy. In hope and compassion, we pray for anyone whose Christmas is saddened by bereavement, illness, homelessness, social or financial problems. We pray for the sick, including Margaret, Little Lee, Helena, Keris, Pauline, Bill, Anne, Mike, Sylvia, Maggie, Vernon, Lee, Pat, Darwin, Martinette, Tony, Sandra and Marco. We pray for the families of the recently bereaved, including Michelle, Stephen and Patrick. May they find moments of joy to lighten the darkness. Lord, in your mercy. In hope and gladness, we pray for families, especially those who are welcoming new life into their midst. May they grow in love and unity and may that love radiate to everybody they meet. Lord, in your mercy. In hope and appreciation, we pray for caregivers. May they be blessed for their generosity and support. Lord, in your mercy. In hope and in laughter, we pray for children as they teach us the joys of simplicity and innocence. May they find love and security wherever they may go. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, be born in our hearts and our lives. Amen. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's indeed right to give thanks and praise Almighty God and Everlasting Father through Jesus Christ your Son. Jesus is the one foretold by all the prophets whom the Virgin Mother bore with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist was Jesus' herald and made Jesus known when at last Jesus came. Christ's love fills us with joy as we prepare to celebrate the birth so when Jesus comes again, we will be found watching in prayer, our hearts filled with wonder and praise. And so with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your glory, and join in their unending hymn of praise. Great and wonderful Father, we remember when Jesus, the night before dying, gathered with friends, had supper. Jesus took the bread, and thanking you, broke it, gave it to those friends, and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. After thanking you, again gave it to those friends and said, All of you drink from this cup because this is my blood, the new promise of God's love. Do this every time you drink it to remember me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. So, loving Father, remembering how dearly Jesus loves us, we should love Jesus too. Send your Holy Spirit, gentle as a dove, on us and on these gifts, so that everyone who eats and drinks this bread and wine, the body and blood of Jesus, we may be full of your life and goodness. Help us all to walk hand in hand with Jesus and live our lives for him. All honour and glory belong to you, Father, through Jesus your Son, with the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father.
let us pray. Heavenly Father, who chose the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of the promised Saviour, fill us, your servants, with grace, that in all things we may embrace your holy will, and with her rejoice in your salvation, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing our post-communion hymn. It's been good to join with you wherever you are and uh, I look forward to being with you for the first Mass of Christmas. Hold in your thoughts all those who are volunteering and attending and being fed on Christmas Day. There are many wonderful people doing it. Uh, we have been doing this now for five years and uh, yes, it's a very rewarding thing. Uh, we, as I said earlier, will cook in excess of 110 meals this year. Stay safe and I will see you later. So may God, the God of peace, make you perfect and holy and keep you safe and blameless in spirit, soul and body for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and the blessing of God Almighty, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Mm.